Yeah. 
Jehovah is your name. Mighty warrior, great in battle, Jehovah is your name.
my Yahweh. You remain to be the sovereign God in every situation, oh God. From January to February to March, April, May, June, July, August, Father, you have been faithful, Lord. We have experienced the exemptions with the blood of Jesus. And we want to thank you, Lord, for sustaining us till this day, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us up to today, Jehovah God, in the name of Jesus. You have been Yahweh in every situation. You have been Alpha and Omega. You have been Jehovah Nisi, our banner and our victory. You have been Jehovah Shalom, our peace. You have been Jehovah Rohi, our healer and our shepherd. We worship you, Lord, and we give you all the glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you.
just lift up your voice to the Lord this evening and tell him that he alone is enough. He alone is sufficient for us. He alone is sufficient for our life, for our purpose, for our future, for our families, for our nation. In the name of Jesus, Father, we worship you this evening. We acknowledge you as the all-sufficient God in our lives this evening in the name of Jesus. We acknowledge that without you we are nothing in the mighty name of Jesus. Only your presence, of oh God, is able to carry us through the various seasons in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, were it not for you, our God and King, we could not be standing here today. Were it not for you, Jehovah, we could not be having the breath of life. Were it not for you, Jehovah, we could have nothing to boast about. For this evening, our God, we lift our praises to you. This evening, Jehovah God, we lift our worship to you. This evening, King of glory, we lay aside everything that we may boast in, everything that we may take glory in, and acknowledge that you alone deserve our worship. You alone deserve all the praise. You alone deserve all the honor, all the power, dominion, and adoration belongs to you. Thank you, Jehovah God, for this far that you have brought us. Thank you, Father, for your mercies. Thank you, Jehovah God, for your loving kindness. Thank you, King of glory, because you have spared us from many dangers. You have spared us from many attacks of the enemy. You have spared us from many weapons that the evil one had leveled against us. Thank you because you have remained to be faithful and true in all situations, in all seasons, every day, every single day of this year, every single week, every single month, every passing hour, every passing minute. Even in the days to come, we know that you will remain faithful because that is who you are. In the mighty name of Jesus, therefore, Lord, we are grateful that you have given us this opportunity once again to be gathered together in your sanctuary. Even those who are tuned in through our online platforms, oh God, through Facebook and YouTube, Jehovah God, we pray for them, King of glory. We pray for them in their situations and circumstances. That Lord, by your spirit, by your power, oh God, by your unlimited anointing, that you may reach out to them, that you may minister to them in their situation. In the mighty name of Jesus, that in everything, oh God, you may be glorified and exalted. In the mighty name of Jesus, therefore have your way this even Lord as we continue with this series of the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit of God we thank you because you are present with us this evening we pray that you may teach us we pray that you may guide us we pray that you may give us insight and understanding into your gifts and into your word that our lives may be transformed that we may be empowered that we may walk in your will that we may serve your purpose, that we may glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We can give the Lord a clap of praise this evening. Thank you, worship team and the band for your wonderful ministries. We can take our seats in the presence of God. Man, praise the Lord. Man, thank you, each one of us, for joining us this evening, both physically and online, for our hour of grace, our fellowship, which happens every Friday from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. And we are glad that you have been able to join us. 
uh, that we may uh, worship the Lord together. I know that you have been ministered to through the, the, the praise and worship, and even through the prayer, and now we want to get into the word of God. Um, we have been doing uh, a series in our Friday uh, and uh, Wednesday early morning services on the Holy Spirit. And so we have uh, tackled the divinity of the Holy Spirit. We have tackled uh, the names of the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So in case you have missed out on those sessions, you can check out uh, our Facebook uh, page, uh, that is Sitam Gong, and you may be able to get especially the Friday evening sessions. My name is Ferdinand Ponga, uh, uh, for those who may not know me, and I serve here at Sitam Gong. And I thank God for his grace and uh, the opportunity even to share God's word with us this evening on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So that is uh, our subject of today about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we shall be looking at uh, uh, two passages of scripture, though not fully, uh, but some portions of it. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 to chapter 14 and Romans chapter 12 verse 4 to 8. But before we get uh, into those passages, just as a way of uh, introduction, uh, the topic of gifts of the Holy Spirit is a very exciting one among believers, but it is also a controversial one. There are those who hold the view that either all or some of these gifts ended in the time of the early church, while others believe that these gifts are still operational until uh, today. I am in the latter category of those who believe that these gifts are still operational among believers today. But even among those who believe that these gifts are still operational today, there exist differences in understanding of the gifts and how they should be exercised. So today, we will examine the two passages that I have uh, mentioned. That is 1 Corinthians chapter 12 uh, to chapter 14 and, verse, and Romans chapter 12 verse 4 to 8. And before examining these passages, allow me to briefly highlight the context of Paul's writing, especially to the Corinthian church concerning the gifts. Paul was writing to the Corinthian believers at a time at, the, at a time when they were experiencing challenges of division, the believers were aligning themselves to different spiritual leaders. As you read in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10 to 12, some were saying that I belong to Paul. Others were saying I belong to Apollos. Others say I, uh, I follow Cephas. And still others say I belong to Christ. So Paul challenged them. Did Paul die for you? Did Apollos die for you? Did Cephas die for you? In other words, he was pointing them to Christ. That we all belong to Christ. And the rest of us are, are just but servants of Christ. And the aspect of division is also highlighted in uh, chapter 11 verse 17 to 18. There was also competition. As you may see in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 6 to 7. And Paul tells them that do not go beyond what is written. Then you will not take pride in one man over and against another. For who makes you different from anyone else? And what do you have that you did not receive? So there was some kind of competition. And even in chapter 14 verse 26, it seemed that when the believers gathered, everyone wanted to do something at the same time. And he tells them that whenever you come together, everyone has a hymn or a, a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. So there seemed to be some kind of competition which res resulted in confusion. Besides that, there was influence for, from pagan practices in their society. And Paul highlights uh, the issue of idol feasts in chapter 10, verse 14 to 22. And even in chapter 12, verse 2, the one we are examining today, he tells them that 
You know that when you are pagans, somehow or other, you are influenced and led astray to mute idols. So there was some pagan influence which to an extent was attempting to penetrate uh, amongst the believers. So it was in such a context that Paul was instructing them about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and how they should be exercised in the church. Just as a way of definition, a gift, I tried to check out the meaning of the word gift and uh, some dictionaries say that a gift is a notable capacity, a talent or endowment. That is Merriam-Webster dictionary. It also says that it is something which is voluntarily transferred by one person to another without compensation. The Collins and Macmillan Dictionary define it as something that you give to someone as a present. And finally, the Longman's Dictionary defines it as an ability that is given to you by God. So in summary, when we are talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we are talking about abilities or endowments which are given voluntarily and freely by the Holy Spirit to believers. I will repeat. Gifts of the Holy Spirit are abilities or endowments which are given voluntarily and freely by the Holy Spirit to believers. So this evening, I would want to highlight four key aspects about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The first aspect is their nature and distribution. Their nature and distribution. The second uh, aspect is their purpose. The third aspect is a brief highlight of each of them. And then the fourth aspect is the underlying principle. So before I, I, I go into the four aspects, allow me to read briefly 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 to 11. You can turn your Bibles to that portion of scripture. The Bible says, Now about spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that when you are pagans, somehow or other you are influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cast, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by the Spirit by means of the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecies, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still to another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he gives them to each one just as he determines. Romans chapter 12, verse, uh, verse 6 to 8, it says, We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. And so to the first aspect, their nature and distribution. And this we find in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4, and verse 11, and verse 12 to 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 tells us that 
There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. And so this means that the gifts are different or diverse. In their nature, they are different or diverse. So that means that one believer may have one gift and another may have another gift. They may not be the same in every, in, in every believer. That means the Holy Spirit has not given similar gifts to every believer. They are different and diverse. But in, still in the same nature, they are given by the same Spirit. So it is, the, it is the same Holy Spirit who has given these gifts to the various believers. And verse 11 informs us that it is he who determines which gift to give to which believer. And as he says, in, he, uh, Paul asks some questions for reflection, which I may refer to as uh, rhetorical questions. In verse 29 to 30, he asks, Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all speak in tongues? Uh, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But eagerly desire the greater gifts. So in essence, he's saying, not every believer is a prophet. Not every believer can speak in tongues. Not every believer can interpret tongues. Not every believer has the gift of wisdom. Not every believer has the gift of knowledge. And the, and the list goes on. But it is the Holy Spirit who determines which gift to give to which believer. Because he is the giver. Just like the way we can give gifts uh, amongst ourselves as, uh, as human beings. You may decide to bless a friend with a phone you can decide to give another one a laptop. You can decide to bless another one with a suit. You as the giver, you are the, it is your prerogative. It is at your discretion to determine which gift to give to which person and for what reason. And this falls within the sovereignty of God. And still, the Bible tells us that they serve the same Lord and the same God works all of them in all men. And when Paul is using the analogy of the body, when you look at chapter 12, downwards to uh, 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 verse 12, I mean all the way to verse 27, he's in, in summary, he's telling them that none of the gifts is inferior or superior to the other. But on the contrary, these gifts are interdependent. Borrowing from the analogy of the body parts, he tells them that if the whole body were an eye, in verse 17, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? And, uh, and he tells them that on the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable and the parts that we think are less honorable we treat with special honor so one believer may have been given a gift which appears to be a leg in the analogy of the body but it is not inferior to the gift which may appear to be an eye or to which may appear to be a liver which deals with detoxification in the body or a gift which may appear to be like the heart, which may boast of pumping blood uh, in the system, or the lung, the lungs which are responsible for air circulation, or the brain, which may say that without my functioning, the body is as good as dead. But Paul is saying that all these gifts are important and they are part of one and the same body. So that is as far as uh, their nature and distribution is concerned. Coming to their purpose, 1 Corinthians 12 verse 7 tells us that now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. That is the purpose of the gifts. That the manifestation of these gifts, how you manifest the gift that has been given to you 
it should serve for the it should serve the purpose of the common good of believers and he emphasizes this as well in chapter 14 verse 26 b where he tells them that all this must be done for the strengthening or building up or edification of the church so in other words when you are given the gifts of the holy a, a gift of the holy spirit they are not given for you to you to make you just feel nice or to make you feel powerful or to make you feel very spiritual or to look down on other believers who may not be having the gift that you possess but rather you have been given that gift so that you can play your part in building the body of Christ spiritually. In other words, the gift is not for your own personal or selfish benefit, but for the benefit of other believers as well who are members of the body of Christ just as you are. So the question is, how are you using your gift to build up others in service to God. How are you using your gift to build up others in service to God? That is as far as the purpose of the gifts is concerned. It is for the common good, the strengthening, the building up, or the edification of the church. And now we come to a brief highlight of the gifts as highlighted in the passages that we have read. So I will not read the passage again, but I'll just go uh, into mentioning them. Uh, actually, Paul has highlighted about 15 gifts of the Holy Spirit. Time does not allow me to explain each one of them in detail, but I will attempt on some of them. Beginning with the passage in 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 12, he, men he mentions the first gift as the message or the word or the utterance of wisdom. Now wisdom is the quality of having good judgment according to the Oxford Dictionary. Now this gift manifests for example in a crisis situation whereby people, the people involved don't know what to do. Then a believer in their midst speaks a message or a word of wisdom which resolves the crisis in the best way and in line with God's will and gives and is able to give guidance on the way forward. I may highlight an example of this in Acts chapter 27, verse 9 uh, to 12 uh, and verse 21, where Paul was on a voyage to Rome and they reached a place and he warned the, the crew in the ship he was sailing in, not to sail from Crete because the journey would be dangerous and disastrous. But they ignored Paul's advice and continued with the journey. And the results emerged not long afterwards. You can read that passage in Acts chapter 26. Uh, this is about the message of wisdom. And I could also mention the example of King Solomon. I know King Solomon recently has become very popular uh, in relation to, to a clip where it is said that he... <laughs> uh, let me not go there. But we remember an example of King Solomon in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 16 to 27, whereby he presided, he decided a dispute between two prostitutes who are claiming ownership to a child. And and uh, Solomon had just been given the gift of wisdom by God. And so this dispute was brought before him. And each of the prostitutes was, say, was claiming that this son is mine. And the other one was saying, no, this, this child is mine. She killed her child. And Solomon told them, bring me a sword. And cut this child into two. So that each of the women can go with, with a half. Now, the, the woman who was the actual owner of the, of the child said, No, my Lord, do not cut the child into two. Give, it to, give him to the other woman. But the other woman said, No, there is no need. Let all of us lose. Let the, the child be cut into two. 
And Solomon said, give the child to this woman who has said that she should not be, uh, he should not be cut because this is the rightful honor of the child. That was the gift of wisdom at work even in the Old Testament. Coming to the second gift, the message, the word or the utterance of knowledge. This is where a believer is able to speak of things which is he hasn't been told about or taught before through the enablement of the Holy Spirit. This is where, for example, a believer can know what another person is going through without being told prior. And we have seen this at work sometimes, even in churches whereby a minister can, can pick out somebody uh, in the congregation who is going through a certain situation. He's able to tell you exactly what you are going through. This is through this, this word of knowledge. And King Solomon again demonstrated this gift in 1 Kings chapter 4 verse 33. Whereby we are told that he described plant life from the cedar of Lebanon to the hyssop that grows out of, out of walls. He also taught about animals and birds and reptiles and fish. It's like he had knowledge of every living thing under the face of the earth. He was like a professor of botany and zoology and these other fields. Yet he had not gone to school. It was just a gift from God. So that is uh, the second gift which Paul highlights in this case. Thirdly, he mentions the gift of faith. The gift of faith. The gift of faith is the supernatural ability to believe God for great things which are beyond human ability and not only just believing but also taking a step in that direction as you believe God to accomplish to accomplish that thing and actually he does it I know faith is, a, is an aspect uh, which is expected of every believer but Paul here highlights it also as a gift of the Holy Spirit and we have an example of Peter in Matthew 14, verse 28 to 29, uh, in the case whereby Jesus was walking on water. And Peter challenged Jesus. He dared him and told him, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus, when Jesus called him, actually Peter stepped out of the boat and walked on water. That was a gift of faith. That is what distinguished Peter from the rest of the disciples. The other disciples just remained in the boat watching what would happen next. We may also see the gift of faith in the missionaries, for example, who brought the gospel to Africa. At a time when there was no road network, there was no rail, there was no air transport. They came by ship and when they docked on the, on the shore, they did not know what kind of people they are going to meet. They did not know their language. They did not know how they would survive after their supplies would be finished. But they just knew that God has called them to bring the gospel to Africa. And they set out from their countries with their few belongings and came. And a number of them died here as they planted the seed of the gospel. I believe that even at the moment God has given uh, some of us as believers the gift of faith. And maybe you need to take that step as missionaries. As a missionary maybe to Mogadishu. We need missionaries to Mogadishu or to Somalia in general to go and share the gospel with the Al-Shabaab. But most of us are comfortable in our comfort zones and we don't want to step out in faith in accomplishing God's will. Number four, Paul highlights gifts of healing. Interestingly, this gift is highlighted in, pl in plural as gifts of healing, not just the gift of healing, but gifts of healing. And even though also the power to heal is available to every believer, there are some believers 
who have been given these gifts of healing so that in most cases, whenever they encounter a sick person, they can heal them either through prayer, laying their hands on them, or just pronouncing their healing. And they are healed. However, this gift is also executed under the guidance of the Holy Spirit and not at the discretion of the believer who has these gifts. Otherwise, if that were the case, we would not be having uh, people admitted in hospitals or sick at home. Because these, these believers who have this gift, they will just walk into the hospital and discharge all the sick people. And you would invite them into your home whenever you are sick and they would uh, declare healing upon you and you are fine, you are good to go. But it is executed under the guidance of the Holy Spirit in line with God's will. Because sometimes God permits sickness in the lives of people for his own sovereign reasons. The gift of miraculous powers it is the ability to cause things to happen which are extraordinary. For example, the, uh, uh, Elijah speaking to the widow of, at Zarephath in 1 Kings 17, 14 and telling her that your flour and your oil will not be depleted. And that was the case. We also see Elijah and Elisha causing the waters of River Jordan to part just by striking it with the cloak of Elijah. And they were able to cross on dry ground. We also have an example of Peter raising Dorcas from the dead in Acts chapter 9 verse 40. And Paul raising Eutychus from the dead in Acts chapter 20 verse 9 to 10. The sixth gift which Paul highlights is the gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy has two dimensions. There is the, us, there is the dimension of foretelling and there is the dimension of foretelling. Foretelling is whereby a believer is able to speak about things which will happen in the future by the Holy Spirit. And foretelling is whereby a believer is able to speak a message of encouragement or rebuke in a gathering addressing certain things among the believers at a given time. So there is foretelling, speaking about things which will happen in the future and foretelling, speaking to situations in the present. We see an example uh, of this gift in Acts chapter 11 verse 27 to 30. A prophet named Agabus who by the Spirit, he predicted a severe famine throughout Rome. And as a result, the believers decided to contribute some help to their brethren in Judea. This same Agabus also pro prophesied how Paul would be arrested in Jerusalem and be handed over to the Gentiles in Acts chapter 21, verse 10 to 11. Besides that, in Acts 21, verse 8 to 9, we are told about Philip the evangelist who had four daughters who prophesied. Though we are not told about the content of their prophecy. But coming to Acts chapter, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Paul now focuses, focuses on the foretelling aspect of prophecy in Acts chapter 14. Which time fails us to read through. Gift number 7. Distinguishing between prophecy between spirits. Distinguishing between spirits. First John chapter 4 verse 1 tells us not to believe every spirit, but to test the spirits to see whether they are from God because many false prophets have gone out into the world. So this is a very important gift to, be, to believers. And we see an example of it in Acts chapter 16, verse 16 to 18, where there was a slave girl in Philippi who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. And I think this is a spirit of divination. And the Bible tells us that she earned a lot of money for her owners by fortune telling. And when Paul and Silas and other believers arrived there, they were following them. And she was following them and shouting, telling the people, 
that these men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. So even though what she was saying was true, after some time, Paul discerned that the spirit in her was not the Holy Spirit. And so he turned and rebuked that spirit and it left her immediately. And as a result, Paul and Silas were persecuted. That is the gift of distinguishing between spirits. Number eight, the gift of speaking in different kinds of tongues or languages. This gift also has two dimensions. The first, dimensions in, the first dimension is speaking in other human languages which the speaker has not learned before. And this is what we, we see in Acts chapter 2 verse 4 to 12 where when the Holy Spirit came upon believers, they were able to speak in other tongues. And the Bible tells us that at that time, uh, they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they heard this sound, uh, a, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. So the, the believers were able to speak in other existent human languages but which they had not learned before. And so these people who are gathered were able to hear them proclaiming the works of God in their own languages. And they were surprised and they gathered and said, how is it that each and not all these men who are speaking Galileans, they knew that most of the disciples were coming from Galilee, but they were able to speak in various diverse languages. The second dimension is that which is uh, we may call uttering mysteries in the spirit as mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 2. Now the first dimension is more beneficial to others because they hear you proclaiming the works of God in their own languages. But the second dimension benefits only the speaker because the rest cannot understand what you are saying unless it is interpreted. And so Paul directs that unless there is an interpreter, you should not utter mysteries in the spirit in public, but rather speak to yourself and to God. Interestingly, most Pentecostal believers seem more inclined to this second dimension of tongues and they do it without interpretation. Also, this gift of speaking in tongues has been held in higher regard in Pentecostal circles more than the other gifts so that those who don't have it are seen as not Pentecostal or not spiritual enough. And sometimes believers have gone to the extent of uh, maybe feeling undermined or feeling inferior and some even faking tongues in order to, to fit in and appear as also equally spiritual. But Paul tells the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 5 that I would like every one of you to speak in tongues, but I would rather have you prophesy. Because prophecy edifies the church as compared to speaking in tongues unless it is accompanied with interpretation. And he goes on to tell them in verse 18 to 19 that I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. But in the church, I would rather speak five intelligible words to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. Number nine is the interpretation of tongues. And this is the gift through which a believer can explain to other believers the mysteries which have been spoken by another believer who has the gift of speaking in other tongues. Interestingly, this is a very rare, is a very rare gift among believers and uh, I don't have an example of it in scripture where another believer was uh, interpreting the tongues of another. But Paul highlights it among the gifts uh, of the Holy Spirit. The other gifts, I will not be able to explain them, but he mentions the gift of teaching 
the gift of showing mercy, the gift of administration or leadership, the gift of serving, the gift of encouraging others, and the gift of contributing to the needs of others or the gift of giving. Those are about uh, 15 gifts in total. But finally, as I draw to a conclusion, Paul highlights the underlying principle which should be upheld in the exercise of these gifts. And this underlying principle is the principle of love. And he dedicates the entire chapter of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 to emphasize on this principle. And he says that if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging symbol. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, and, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor, because sometimes people give just to gain publicity and surrender my body to the flames but have not love, I gain nothing. So Paul emphasizes that in the, in the exercise of these spiritual gifts, let us be driven by love and the desire to seek the common good or the edification, the building up of the church of Christ. So the, may the Holy Spirit give us more understanding of these gifts and help us to utilize them in line with his will and purpose and for the glory and honor of his name. Amen. God bless you. Pastor Steve. This is, the, this is quite expansive and, and something that we need to look at in length, at length and keep reminding ourselves of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And he gives this gift so that the body of Christ can benefit. And today I want us to make one prayer. I want us to make a couple of prayers, but the first prayer I want us to make is that this week, if you do not know which gift the Holy Spirit has given you, that he will reveal that gift to you. And he will enable you to realize the gift that he has placed in your life so that you can be useful in the body of Christ. As Pastor Ponga was expounding on the gifts, I did not hear a gift that is called warming chairs in the church. Nor did I uh, hear a gift of receiving masses. I just heard one of giving. And I pray that none of us will be found in the church having a gift that the Holy Spirit did not give. And that gift is called the gift of receiving, the gift of sitting and warming chairs. But that we will be used in the body of Christ. We will be used in the kingdom of God. We will not, you know, we may not all fit in the church and in the pulpit. But everywhere we go, it is a field and it is a place that God has placed you where he wants you to use that gift so that his name may be glorified and people may be able to come to faith. And so, that is the first prayer I want us to make. That if you do not know the gift that the Holy Spirit has given you, he will reveal that gift to you that you will be able to use it. But the second prayer I want us to, I would like us to pray is that the Holy Spirit will place you in a place, in a corner, where he, you will be forced to utilize the gift that he has given you. Some of us need some jump starting of our gift so that we can be used. And we pray that God will jumpstart that gift that has been dormant. And that he will cause you to be in a situation where you will look up to him and trust him. And that that gift will be operational. And thirdly, I want us to make this prayer that none of us will be proud because of the gifts that the Holy Spirit has given us. Maybe you are here and you have been given more than one gift. Maybe there are times you feel that your gift is not good enough but you desire another gift. And I pray, I want us to pray about this underlying principle of love, that all of us will be governed by love in our exercise of this gift. Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, as he ends, he says this, that I will show you a more excellent way. And this, and then he says that you desire 
a higher gift you have you desire a higher thing which is love so if you desire the gift of the holy spirit i would like you to pray i would like us to pray that you will desire to love more than you will desire to speak in tongues that you will desire to love more than you desire to have the gift of healing that you will desire to love more than you have the gift of working miracles or even of of interpreting tongues of prophecy and of on and of probably whatever other gift that you are desiring that above all the church of Christ Sitam Gong will be governed by the principle of love so that every person can get to exercise their gift so that some people are not left behind so i want you to take some moments and if you can you could stand before the lord this afternoon this evening as we go before god and i want you to take a few minutes and pray and 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 pray in line with these items that i have mentioned in this direction that i have mentioned and then we are going to pray together and conclude so i want you to go before the lord and and pray that if you do not know the gift that he has given you that he will reveal that gift to you and then i want you to pray that for those who have the gift and that gift that has been dormant that god will place them in a place where they will have to exercise that gift and thirdly i want us to pray that we will be governed by the principle of love above the gifts that the holy spirit has given us so go before the lord and 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 pray for a few minutes uh before we come to the close of this service father in the name of jesus want to come before you this evening oh god and i want to pray for the gift of the holy spirit the gift that you have laid in the hearts of men oh god maybe there are some people who are watching us today there are some people who are here today and the question they are asking us pastor ponga is speaking about the gift of the holy spirit is how do i know that i have a certain gift how do i know what is the gift that the holy spirit has given one thing we can be sure holy spirit is that there is no believer that you have left without a gift but some do not know the gift that you have given them and we want to pray for them oh god that you will help them to identify the gift that they have that you will help them to identify the graces that you have laid in their life that you will help them uh, identify the manifestations your manifestations through their life in the name of jesus christ we pray for them oh god that you would help them to identify their place of service in the church their place of ministry in the church their place of ministry in the kingdom of god we pray that oh god that as they study the scriptures as they diligently seek you in prayer that lord you will make them to know the gift that you have laid in their life in the name of jesus that lord they may be agents of your your use oh god that they may be your servants serving in the graces you have laid in their life serving in the gifts that you have laid in their lives in the name of Jesus Christ lord there may be some that are new believers in Christ and they do not know extensively about the gifts and they desire lord to be used by you we pray that oh god you will lead them to the identification of the gifts that you have laid in their lives in the name of Jesus and lord i want to pray also so oh god concerning all of us that you have given gifts oh god that some of us our gifts have been dormant and we want to pray for the activation of our gifts in the name of jesus that oh god as we seek you in prayer as we get to commune with you in the place of prayer and in serving you oh god that our gifts will spring to life in the name of jesus that the church of christ will be able to be edified and to benefit from the gifts and the graces that you have laid in the lives of the believers lord your church needs the operation of all the gifts you did not give the gifts so that some can be hidden so that some can be kept in the can kept can be kept behind but you gave every gift and there is none of the gifts that is less than the other and so we pray and especially at Sitam Gong the lord we will experience a season of the springing of gifts 
oh God, a season of utilization of the gifts that you have give, given in the body of Christ in the name of Jesus. We pray that there will be marching, oh God, of members of this congregation. They will emerge with their gifts, oh God, and be able to serve you, be able to serve the body of Christ, be able to make your name known by the gifts that you have laid in their lives. But above all, oh God, you rebuked the church in Corinth because although they were experiencing an, an overabundance of these gifts, oh God, they lacked the, the gift of love. They lacked love between themselves. And we want to pray for Sitam Gong, oh God, and for every believer that is here and that is watching us, oh God, that we will desire to learn more than we will desire to prophesy, that we will desire to learn more than we will desire to speak in tongues, that we will desire to love more than we will desire to have the gift of healing, that we will desire to love more, oh God, and so be able to give opportunities that the other gifts may also be experienced. Lord, there may be some that have moved churches over and over because when they tried to exercise their gifts, they exercised it in the place where there was no love and so they felt condemned. We pray tonight, Lord, that would you help us to love one another deeply even as you command in the scripture. The Bible says that you told your disciples that the world will know that we are truly your disciples by the way we love one another. And we pray that, oh God, in this church, love, love will be more prevalent, oh God, than every other gift, oh God. Love will be more pronounced than every other gift of the Holy Spirit. That love will be more pronounced than the desire for any other gift, oh God, in the name of Jesus. So we pray, oh God, that would you point into our lives, would you point out to us, oh God, the areas in which we have uh, desired more manifestation of gifts than we have loved, the areas in which we have forsaken love and ran after manifestation of gifts. Help us to know those areas, oh God. And we pray that you forgive us. We pray that you guide us back to be able to love one another and to show your love to the world. We thank you for these gifts, oh God, because you gave them to us that we may expand your kingdom, that we may minister to one another, that we may serve you, oh God. We pray in Jesus' name that you will help us to do that in love for you and love for the other believers. We thank you tonight and we bless you, for this is our prayer of faith in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I pray that you will continue seeking God concerning the gifts he has given you and seeking him more about love, that you may be able to love uh, the other saints, that you may be able to love one another. And in that, the world will know that you are disciples. If non-believers came to this church and met every believer here speaking in tongues, but there is no love, they will not desire to be here. But if they came and they found a congregation of people who love one another, and although they do not speak in tongues, they will want to be there. And they will see that Jesus is evident in that congregation. So I pray that as you operate in the levels to which the Holy Spirit will take you in his gifts, that love will be more pronounced than everything else. In Jesus' name, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord guard you. May the Lord guide you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he bless you are going out and you are coming in. May his presence never leave you. And may he give you peace now and forever. In Jesus' name, God bless you. God bless you. See you next time.